I wanted to tell Skip and uh, Jim, y'all reminded me back there, uh, there was a church I visited out here in Brooksville one time, and uh, the very back of the church, like that, they had the climbers. <laughs> so we can accommodate that, for, although I think uh, Sanders is pretty close to it back there. <laughs> well, if somebody comes in packing, we're the jump. <laughs> it won't be a problem. <laughs> Did everybody grab a handle? Yep. All right. Well, let's make music in this place. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful for this night, and we are so, Lord, blessed that we can gather here and just uh, sing your praise. Who are the fellowship of this body of Christ is very sweet. Just come together and, and, and to be encouraged, uh, Lord, through the Holy Spirit, by your word, and um, by your word through the Holy Spirit, uh, through each other. Lord, it, just, it, it, is, it, it is so uplifting. We thank you for the privilege we have to have of being here together tonight. Um, bless this time, Lord, and may it truly be a sweet time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, well, this. Um, sing a couple of hymns. I'm trying to keep the tradition of singing songs we've done in a while. This one, heck, two weeks ago, Rescue the Perishing, 559. 559. Let's grab that one and stand up, please, and uh, sing for the Lord. This is what we're about rescuing uh, the perishing.
And who's the truth? Jesus Christ. Uh, we believe people will find uh, the truth, certainly. And uh, unfortunately, we'll see that in just, just a moment, uh, there are people who kind of want God to prove himself. Uh, and you ever been to a, uh, I don't like labels, but have you ever just been to a, a Pentecostal holiness or a charismatic, actually it's more the, the old-fashioned Pentecostals. Have you ever been to a tent meeting? And it's different from a Baptist meeting. You know that. And uh, people start talk, talking in tongues. When I was probably um, maybe 11 or 12 years of age, Oral Roberts had a, a crusade in Orlando. And my handicapped brother just insisted that he go. And he, uh, I guarantee you my brother was not pursuing Jesus in, in, in any sense of the word. He just, he just wanted to be healed. And uh, guess what? He stood for Roberts. And Oral Roberts, you know, just had this, spoke loudly, touched him. <laughs> but my brother was not healed. Uh, I've been to other revivals over the years, particularly when I was young, and I was trying to find out what Christianity is all about. And I realized that's, that's not the direction God's leading me to go. And uh, but there are a lot of people who are wanting God to prove himself, and they believe that the proof that God exists is through signs and miracles and, and all kinds of wonders. I'm not against signs and wonders and miracles. God, God can certainly do that. But when, when it comes to our belief, you know, why do you believe in Jesus? And, uh, obviously, these, these Pharisees uh, came to Jesus for the, for the wrong reason. So, uh, verse 10 says, uh, Immediately, Jesus got in the boat with his disciples and came to the region of Dalmanutha. Uh, by the way, that is the only place in all the Bible where Dalmanutha is, is mentioned. The only place. And it's, uh, it's a place, it's an area on the west coast of the Sea of Galilee, a very small place. But uh, that's, that's where Jesus went. And uh, perhaps he went to this area that's kind of secluded, not very populated. Maybe he got it, he had to get away again. You know, he, he had to have time alone with, with his father. But uh, guess what? The Pharisees, verse 11, came out and began to uh, dispute him. Um, it says, seeking from him a sign from heaven and testing him. Well, this is just one more effort as we've made our way through the book of Mark. Here's one more time. I haven't counted all the times the Pharisees and the Sadducees have, have tried to test Jesus, but we've seen it over and over and, and over uh, again. And uh, do, you think, do you think Jesus knew what their motives were? This means yes. You think Jesus knew their motives? Well, of course he did. He's, he's the Son of God. He knew, he knew everything, uh, didn't he? And uh, so here is, here is another effort to try to discredit Jesus. You know, if they could test him and they could, they could get some kind of sign. And, and notice what verse 11 says, seeking from him a sign from heaven. And uh, they had already heard about all the people who had been healed. They had heard about, uh, you know, all the miracles. Just the fact that multitudes of people were coming to hear him is pretty good proof that uh, Jesus was the miracle worker. Jesus could do many uh, great and, and wonderful uh, things. As you already know, um, uh, people in that day were looking for, for signs. And many occasions we find Jesus, he had to leave cities because why? They wanted a sign. And uh, Jesus wasn't here primarily to give people a, a, a sign. Um, there are all kinds of signs that had already been revealed that, that Jesus was the Christ, the, the Messiah. Um, when, you, when you think about it, um, if these Pharisees and these Sadducees, who supposedly knew the Word of God, um, they would have seen those prophecies in the Old Testament. Uh, have you ever examined all the prophecies in, in the Old Testament? Of course, their knowledge would have been related to the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. But uh, there, there are prophecies in the first five books of the Bible about, about Jesus. And if these Pharisees and Sadducees um, 
really remembered what they had already studied, they, they would know this Jesus being born in Bethlehem was, was one of the great miracles, one of the great signs that, that, uh, of, of, of that day. Um, you know, you could, we could also say there's, there's always been a sign of, of, uh, of, of God. In Romans, um, we are reminded of another sign, Romans 1.20. Let me read that to you. Romans 1.20. Which says, For since the creation of the world has invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. So he, he's talking about the creation of God and uh, God's attributes that are clearly seen. Uh, people ought to be able to see the, the mountains and the seas and, and this beautiful world that God created and know, and know there's a God. I mean, what better sign than the creation of God, that, that God's real and alive and, and uh, so, and, and then they should also realize that the Jews have been looking for Messiah for a long, long time. Um, still interesting to me that there's still Jews looking for the Messiah. Uh, for me personally, studying all of the prophecies in the Old Testament, and then Jesus finally coming, and, and to look at the impact of Christianity upon the world, if you want to sign that points to Christ's deity and to his messiahship. Uh, there it is. Right. There is the Bible. He prophecies. He came. He, he did what he said he was going to do. He died on the cross. He rose again from the dead. And I shared with you recently that there are actually more prophecies about his second coming than his first coming. And uh, so he did. History reports it. Um, it's interesting, uh, when I was in seminary, there was, uh, there was a question, and actually this took place back in the 30s and 40s. There's was a question, you know, was Jesus just a myth or was he a real historical figure? Uh, we, we know he, there was a historical Jesus. We believe he really existed and really lived. And he, was, he was not a myth. And history records that there really was a man called Jesus. And he really was a fulfillment of the scripture. And, uh, and, and you... I mean, to me, one of the greatest signs of the validity of, of Christian belief is, is just look at the world today. You know? uh, all the people, all the churches, um, all the money, all the salvations. I mean, when I look at you and I, and, and I, and I uh, engage with people in the community, and, and I know a couple of days this week I've been out knocking on doors, and uh, you, you talk to people, and... It's obvious when you're talking to someone who knows Christ versus someone who doesn't know Christ. And I mean, it's the difference between night and day. And you meet someone, and I'd say, well, I'm Pastor David, first time I'm an assassin. How are you doing? Well, you know, not, not doing too well, but I'm going to be all right. And I said, well, why is that? Well, I, I believe in Christ. I believe in prayer. And we've really been praying. Y'all take care of us. Versus someone who is just totally hopeless, helpless. It's because they, they, they don't uh, believe. My point is, there are obvious signs everywhere who Jesus is. And it's kind of crazy that these Pharisees and Sadducees needed more signs and, and, and more uh, wonder, uh, wonders. Um, and, and, and don't forget, these, these, are not, these are not dumb men. These are among the, the most intelligent, the most religious people of, of that day and time. And uh, it, to me, it, 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 was, it was obvious. It was obvious who Jesus was and what he came to do. But um, their motives were less than, than what they should have been. So in uh, chapter 8, verse, uh, verse 12, uh, Jesus said that he sighed deeply. Uh, the word sigh is a word that means grief. So he was, he was grieved with these people. Uh, if I might say, he was stirred to the depths of his being that, that these religious leaders just simply did not get it. They just, they just did not perceive who Jesus Christ was. 
And because they didn't seek to understand who Jesus was as a Messiah, as a son of God, they're looking for signs and miracles and wonders and all that. And they're just absolutely looking totally, completely in the, the, wrong, uh, the wrong place. And uh, Jesus knew their hearts. And what does the Bible say? What did Jesus say? He asked the question, why does this generation seek a sign? I, th I think he's, he's probably just exasperated. Surely, assuredly, I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. So let me ask you, if you, if you think about it, why do you think Jesus did not give Pharisees and Sadducees and, and certainly others? Why did he not give them a sign? I mean, Jesus is pretty evident. No sign will be given. Why do you think Jesus didn't give a sign? They were supposed to walk by faith, not by sight. Yeah. yeah they, they were so they could see. Yeah. Right, right. yeah. Yeah, Jesus calls us to faith in him. Jesus came to be the Messiah. He came to be our Savior and our Lord. He came to forgive us of our sins. And he's all about intangible things like love, and repentance, and forgiveness, you know, things of the heart. And these guys are looking for something that is physical, something that they can see. Can you think of another reason why no sign was given? Yeah. They just wanted to disclaim him. They wanted to put a disclaimer on him. Yeah. People were following him. And he said, well, if you can't do a sign, well, what's that mean? Yeah, nothing. Yeah. He already gave us a sign. Yeah, he did. He'd already given a lot of signs, actually. Uh, <coughs> If they were, quote, smart, they were the intelligent men that they're supposed to be, they, they should have seen who Jesus uh, really was at this, this point. Um, it's obvious that the Jews uh, did not understand, and particularly the, the religionists, the, the leadership of the Jews, they just didn't understand what true religion was all about. True religion was not about, was it just about feeding the hungry and helping people. And, and you know, the Jews, they, they had quite a vanilla ministry. And they do to this day. Um, but Christianity was about love and about issues of, of the heart. And uh, God wanted people to believe in him for who he, for who Jesus is. What he came to do. What did Jesus come to do? Did he, did he come to heal us physically? Did he, did he come to you know, for all these things. No, I mean, he can do that. That's not the main reason he came. He came to give us a new life. He came to be our Messiah, our Lord, and, and, uh, and, and our Savior. And uh, verse 13 is kind of sad to me. We also can call it God's Son. Yeah. yeah. Verse 13 is very sad. He left them. He just since he turned, turned his back on them and, uh, and he got in his boat and, and he left. There's a few scriptures that uh, I, I was thinking of Matthew 10.33. Uh, Jesus said, Whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. So this, this is utter rejection on the part of these Pharisees and Sadducees. In Mark 8, we'll get to this uh, in a few weeks, but in Mark 8, 38, whoever is ashamed of me and my words to this adulterous and sinful generation, him, the Son of Man, will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father and his holy angels. The point is, Jesus does, uh, he, wants, he, he wants us to believe. He, doesn't, he wants a full-fledged commitment uh, of Forsaking ourselves, bearing the cross, and, and following uh, Jesus Christ. Um, verse, oh boy, Brother John is uh, very blunt, 1 John chapter 2, verses uh, 22 through uh, 23. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is a Christ? That's about as blunt as you can get. Who is a liar? Well, he who denies that Jesus is a Christ. He is the Antichrist. Who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father 
on. So, so I, I want to ask you as we bring this to a close, I want to leave plenty of time for prayer because there's so many prayer needs right now. So would you agree that this is, this is, if not the greatest challenge, but one of the greatest challenges to the church today? Uh, unbelief. Yeah, yeah. I was listening to a movie radio today, and there was a show on there, and it was talking about unbelief. And it was talking about how there's this generation of people that are taking things like truth and saying, you know, changing it to be, you are the truth, I am the truth. You, you know, and, and they say that they believe in what they call a greater power, you know, have anybody like throw things out to the universe, you know, that's what they do. Let's just throw it out to the universe it's because they don't want to pray. Yeah. Because they don't want to, you know, believe in, in, in Jesus or, or God. Yeah. You know, that's, I mean, that's a lot of this generation that's yeah. out there. Are, are there still those in our culture who are seeking the signs and wonders and miracles? Rather than really seeking Christ, is that, is that still prevalent? Yeah. We had somebody in our Sunday school class years ago who was in the long he passed away. But he said that he made the statement on Sunday to start with me that there'd be a lot more people saying that Jesus was still performing miracles and stuff. Well, that's not true if you look back where Jesus walked on the earth. Look when the apostles and they were all performing miracles. It, it's not about that. It's like you said, it's about, like Larry said, you've got to come by faith. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've got to get the right perspective. What is the greatest miracle? Right. Our salvation. Salvation. Well, I, yeah. I mean, as I get older, I, I, I'm so aware. Of it. I, I'm, I'm a recipient of the greatest miracle that anybody could ever experience. Mm -hmm. I was born again. Yeah. Born again at 14. Changed my life. I mean, you know what? It didn't just change my life, it's changed my life ever since. And as I get older and I get closer to going to heaven, I hope that's not any time soon. I'd like to stay around here a long time. But you know what? He's still changing my life. And, and one of the great joys in, uh, is of my life is, is to know that I'm saved. And um, I, I, I thought about it a lot um, the last few days, how this hurricane has really affected me. And I think it really affected me to go into homes of some people not too far from here. And people who lost lost everything. Uh, I was talking to Richard Creech, he's one of the deacons, actually he's chairman of deacons at uh, Cornerstone. He's with the disaster relief. And, uh, he said, uh, this is bad. It's, it's some, some of the houses back here, it'll, it'll just break your heart. I, I still picture of a mother probably the young she's a young 30 year old with three kids and her her trailer did not flood but it was just it was just everything else that, that happened she said there was water running all around her place kids were scared and it just there were a lot of issues in the yeah you know, she she had tears in her eyes and I pray for her. She, there's all these shoes on Christian. But, you know, just you know, went to another house and they literally, and it was probably a middle class or upper middle class uh, home, they literally had all their furniture out on the road. Have you ever experienced that? I, I haven't I have experienced that. I was just trying to put myself in, in their shoes. So, it, uh, you know, these people don't need signs. They, wonder, they need Jesus. It's the only one's going to give someone security and, and peace and stability in the midst of the storm. It's, it's, it's a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, uh, that text reading of isn't there a parallel passage in Matthew when they ask for a sign? Yeah. And Jesus says, No sign will give you except for Jonah. Who basically is referring to himself too? Like, who three days he's saying, I'm here. Yeah. So that's what and that is our son. Jesus is our son. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that, that same passage uh, says that the, the, the Sadducees joined with the Pharisees. So, you know, they're, 
they, they all had different, they had different functions, but they were out to give Jesus. So it was good. Um, has, has the church in America, and I'm not just, I'm not just talking about us, I, I think I know who you are, but has the church of Jesus Christ in America been, been tempted to, to present to the world um, a, a, a substitute gospel? You know, we may do it in the name of Jesus, but, but we're thinking if we can have these miracles and all these signs and do all these things, that that makes people a believer. And, you know, I, I think there's been um, a real movement in the last 30, 40 years um, to detract from the deity of Christ, the messiahship of Jesus, and, and to try to get people to come to church through a program and, and through uh, giveaways. And, I mean, let's face it, churches have done some crazy things to get people to come to church. And, and what we what we need to do, and this is one reason I'm a Baptist preacher, I just think we need to get out there and tell the world about Jesus. He's the Savior of the world. You're lost. You need to be saved. He died on the cross for your sins. He rose again from the dead. He's coming back. Yeah, that's just, that's just you know, who I am. And whether that relates to our culture or not, I don't really care. I do, I do believe it does relate to people because people will listen when you talk about Jesus. I found that when I talk about church, church programs, people turn me off. They want to hear about God. They want to hear about the relationship with Jesus Christ. Anybody? Anything to share? Yeah. This might give you a little encouragement. No, I preached for 120 years and I had eight people that Christ. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, if you get a little depressed or a little scared, just think about Noah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's a missionary out there that uh, spent years and years and years in the field that don't bring anybody to Christ. And, uh, but has set a lot of seeds. A lot of seeds was set up in a lot of situations. Yeah. And I just think the closer we live in today is just so Christianity has watered itself down, so yeah. just water down. It's watered down to where it becomes, you know, it's just where you don't even, even have to say Jesus, just, uh, you know, go with the flow, so to speak. Yeah. And, that's, and I think a lot of it has to do with uh, uh, you know, social media. And uh, there's so much out there in social media that uh, it feels good to do it. You know, it feels good, and that's what your God is, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So, like you said, it's really the only way to combat that. Or be true to that is to go ahead and uh, just preach to Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So you have to realize it's we, when we preach Jesus, it's it's not in our power. It, it, it's God through us. It's He He has the authority. And he has the power. We're the instruments through, through whom He speaks, through whom He works. And and I, I found over the years that you know when when, when I preach. I listen to other preachers. You, you can tell when an evangelist or a preacher is preaching to bring attention to himself versus someone who really is making an effort to honor God and let God you know, to preach in through. So that's why you need to pray for me. I, I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to preach the gospel. It's not the gospel of David Trump. You know, I've been profoundly taught, uh, changed. By Jesus, He's taught me. He's worked profoundly in my life. This is, this is not about me. It's about His power in and through my life, but it's also His power in your life. So we, we're His representatives, His ambassadors. So it, it's, uh, to me, this is, I, I've thought many times over the years, you know, what was my greatest challenge? And uh, I think this is probably it. I want to. I want everybody to believe. And everybody's not going to believe. Because they're all they're seeking Jesus. A lot of people are seeking Jesus for all the wrong reasons. Right, any other comments? I'm just interested in uh, uh, how do you get people to come to church? I mean, what's the, the formula for that? What, what, you got to have somebody to preach to to lead them to Christ, whether it's door knocking or I'll let somebody the Lord in a drugstore. I mean, but uh, well, how do you get 
draw the people in. I mean, you say, well, that's the Spirit of God. That's not our point of as, as this church keeps, uh, you know, uh, the uh, numbers keep disintegrating, it, you, you're honestly, honestly, you like to see uh, more people come because otherwise they're not going to get the benefit of what Christ did on the cross. Somebody else like to answer that? Yeah, I was just going to say. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. <laughs> how come you, how you come to the church? Why do you come to the church? The Holy Spirit lead you to the church. Uh, what do you want to know for? What do you want to know for what you said? Well, you asked the question, how do you get people to come into the church? How do This is just a church. Any church, any church. I'm just saying, I'm using this particular area. Our church, Holy Spirit. I had a sign. It said, Welcome every pastor. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm there. I was driving by. Right. I was sorry. But you know, Jesus said to the generation, He said, Hey, why would these people get a sign? And I'm really quite honest with you. Why people would want to go to a church at all. I see you. Boy. As we are the sign. Yes, yes, we. we are the sign. We are the sign. We are the sign. And we're supposed to invite people to church. And we're just beggars trying to tell another beggar where to find bread. But the answer to his question is, I didn't come to this church when I first started coming, I think, 50 years ago. I, I had a different reason for coming. And I was trying to think which one, which one he wanted, you know, the one I first started coming or the one I did 30 years after I was saved or today. You know? So why not come tonight? I think like Frank said, so it's a divine appointment. Yeah, that's good. I like the divine appointment. Yeah. <laughs> no, sir. I know when I came as, as your pastor, we didn't have anywhere near this many prayer meetings, you know? And, and I'm thinking, boy, there sure isn't anything about me that's going to attract people to this church. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sure where I was at. And, you know, we just we start praying. We, we just ask the Lord. Bring us people, Lord. One by one, you know, Teresa gets the, the visitors' cards. She, she gives me the, and then, for long, we're getting visitor cards almost every Sunday. You know? yeah. how's, how's this happening? How's this? And I'll be honest with you, it's just God. Don't you agree? Oh, yes. And, and, and we're still seeing that. You know, I, yeah. I believe that people that have. It's just like the people that you talk to. They're, they're always seeking. You know, they're seeking for something. They might not really know what they're seeking They're looking for, for a sign. Exactly. How many exactly. people's in a parking lot or what kind of cars are in the parking lot or exactly. yep. how long they're standing. If you're driving by at 1230 on a Sunday and the parking lot's so full and there's people out standing around. <laughs> and you never know. You, you, something. you might be that sign. Just mm -hmm. like the people that come to the life just. Exactly. You know, and they're invited to come. You know, that was their sign to, to, to you know, try this tradition. Yeah. You know, so I think that's what it brings people. You know? Uh, I know, uh, one family that started coming here, they saw our playground. They thought, that must be a church that cares about children. Yeah. You know? And then they came here and you folks shook their hand gave them warm pheasants and just they just kind of felt the love and the friendliness and they thought this is the kind of church I want to be a part of. And you gave them the word, the truth, and that's what they want to hear. We have to do that. And that's the greatest compliment you can give to me because that's that's what God called me to do when I was a teenage boy. Preach the word of God. It's not it's not my word, it's his word and I'm just I'm just an instrument. You know? I heard that same the week today. And the feel good church that's out there, the wishy washy church that's out there, they're not here for the word. They may be a little bit here and a little bit there, but they're not hearing the word of God. You can't hear the word of God and keep going down the road and keep thinking of yourself. It's impossible. Yeah. And Jesus came from it. <clears throat> he puts our minds and our heart and our souls. It's his. Yeah. And the love that we have. So how can you just keep bouncing off the wall and take a little bit of that see that I don't want to make you feel too bad? Well, too bad. That's the way it is. God says that's it. Can't take it. 
Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Good, good discussion. I appreciate it. Let's, let's look at our, our prayer list.